as above so below as within so without as i have never felt the touch of a woman so i study the ancient unofficial elder scrolls pages greetings travelers i'm gonna teach you how to bring a dead body back to life we all know just about everything about the thieves guild the dark brotherhood and even the vampires now that dawn guard has come out but there's one little subcategory that seems to elude us the necromancers we were never really given any insight what they do or how they practice their art besides the windhelm quest blood on the ice which is notoriously hard to begin if you don't know where to go and when most of you watching this video right now probably don't know anything about these social outcasts that live die and live again by their own art and while i was scrolling through the unofficial elder scrolls wiki studying up on some material that i plan to use in a future video i came across this lovely transcript of a book from morrowind titled on the preparation of a corpse how to obtain and prepare a corpse for necromantic purposes fun so now life has taken you down the path where i'm about to teach you how necromancers do their magic and prepare their uh meat and there's no going back from here so um let's learn something gross together also trigger warning if death is a sensitive subject for you but uh <laughs> no you can't have you can't have mancy without the necro now supposedly the book that this text comes from was actually from morrowind which is the only place in all of tamriel that necromancy is illegal which makes it a lot harder to get um test subjects out there you know what let's call them buddies because throughout the whole book they say corpse like 30 times and i don't want to ruin whatever food you're probably eating right now so there's some other interesting stuff about how necromancy was practiced in other places around tamriel in cyrodiil they actually had court necromancers that were given buddies who were criminals and traitors and stuff like that so that they could practice and that's a far cry from morrowind where the tribunal temple is always looking for necromancy or signs of it whether it's hastily dug graves ash stolen from one of their ash pits they're always looking out for that shit. but unfortunately Unfortunately, there is one thing that is absolutely keeping necromancy alive in Morrowind. Um, free. If there was any hope of this video getting any exposure, it has just been thrown out the window. Necromancer would often take helpers, probably promise them a new life, lots of opportunity and stuff, and then as soon as they have their back turned, hit their off switch. Now you can practice. Fresh new buddy, just like that, and the temple won't have any evidence that you did it. All the other provinces have their own little, like, do's and don'ts of necromancy. Some allow it, some don't. Some don't know how they feel about it. It's not very interesting, so we're just gonna skip past all that stuff because it gets pretty deep and I don't want to get caught up on the stupid little details. So let's get to some of the more interesting lore. What you're seeing on the screen right here is what is known as a slowed. Though I've never heard of them, they are described as basically the best necromancers in all of Tamriel. Personally, I wouldn't expect something to look like this being good at raising the dead, but who knows. They're also tied to the helper trade because they often go to where they're selling them and then come back to their homelands with boatloads of helpers to, as you probably guessed, practice necromancy and when they're picking helpers to purchase from their number one pick pretty much just like every other necromancer would always be orcs because as described in the books orcs have unnaturally strong skin and extremely durable bones representatives of necromancy have actually offered the king of orcs gortwog <laughs> and Gortwog. These representatives of necromancy actually offered him basically a living dead army in exchange that he just gives them the dead bodies of his soldiers so that they can in turn turn them back into living creatures so that they can fight in his army. We can practice necromancy. Everybody wins. And finally, before we get into the actual details and steps of preparing your buddies, we got to talk about animals a little bit. According to the book, the usefulness of a reanimated animal entirely depends on their intelligence in life. While reanimating some form of dog may end up giving you a guard dog, if you reanimate, say, a mud crab, all you're really going to get is... I like money! Either way, though, it appears in the author's studies that no matter what kind of reanimated animal it is, it can't tell the difference between its master and just another person. So a good rule of thumb, if you think it would be able to f*** you up in life, don't bring it back. You want a bear? Have you ever seen The Revenant? <coughs> so now you get it. Let's move on to preparation. 
So there's only one absolutely dire rule when reanimating skeletons, and that's that all major important bones need to be there during the ritual. If you're looking at any certain bone on your body and you think you might not do too good in life without it, you are not going to do too good in death without it. But like if you've got all the major bones, but you're just missing like a couple of those little hand ones, you'll be able to reanimate the skeleton and he'll be fine. But that hand just may be a little. Okay now. Now, once you complete the ritual, that pile of bones will turn into a skeleton and he'll be ready to help you. But believe it or not, this is the most fragile servant you can make. A good practice when reanimating skeletons is to bind their joints with leather straps or metal spikes just to like give them a little bit of extra support so they don't just fall apart if they trip down the stairs. But if you bind the bones too tight, they're not really going to be able to move. And the only thing that can help with that is just practice. And trial and error and at the end of this chapter the final note from the author is that while necromantic servants can be brought back time and time again after death if any of the major bones get damaged or broken that's it you can't reanimate it anymore so he just kind of goes on about oh skeletons are fragile and you keep breaking them it's hard to get skeletons in morrowind because it's illegal here and shitty necromancers need to stop wasting bones <laughs> if you're gonna raise a boner do it right so it doesn't break forever. That's all you had to say. Now let's move on to the last chapter so we can start practicing already. What falls under the fresh corpse category is any buddies who still got some meat on them bones. It doesn't have to be fresh, but it still has to be like meaty, you know? If you can eat it, you can... <laughs> let's just get on with it. This part also says that if the flesh is too decayed and you'd rather just make a skeleton thrall, just hunk that piece of meat down on the riverside by the mud crabs and they's gonna deal with it. Circle of life, baby. If you want to make a zombie servant, you basically just have to find like a suitable table altar type place to do the ritual, which is why you'll often come across tables that got bodies on them in Skyrim and there's necromancers around. They're in the middle of something and you just ruined it. Fuck you. And if your new zombie gets dismembered in any way, you can always reattach their parts and wake them right back up with the leather straps around their wrists and sewing the flesh if it's not too decayed with cat gut. Todd Howard's a fucking freak, dude. And naturally, your zombie's gonna be a little weaker after reattaching his dismembered parts, but as long as you try to keep them fresh, just do the best you can, you should be able to keep reanimating him over and over until you know, he's just spaghetti sauce. Now, the last topic we're going to talk about in this whole transcript is you definitely guessed it, mummification. You can raise a zombie and he'll herk a dirk around for a while until he eventually falls apart. Or you could do a little more prep and supposedly raise a far more superior mummy. Okay, so this part's kind of fucking gross. So we're just going to talk about how to make a mummy real quick and never readdress it. So first you're going to take your buddy and then you're going to soak him in a bath of salt water for at least a month. Imagine what these fucking necromancers smell like, dude. It also states that during this step, Argonians might require more salt than the average person because wet lizard boy. The author also says at this point, some necromancers are known to take the vital organs out, but that there's no actual necessary reason or benefit to doing that. You get some rolls of linen and wrap your buddy all up, which supposedly should prevent further decay. It could also offer a little bit more protection. And finally, it says, don't worry if you wrapped your mummy's joints up too tight because the amount of power that this ritual will give him should be enough to let him be able to move freely on his own. Supposedly doing these extra steps will make an even smarter servant somehow, one that's more capable of thinking freely and understanding commands. So the moral of today's video, parents, your kid's not listening to you? So now you know pretty much everything there is to know about necromancy in the Elder Scrolls. In a beautiful dream where we could escape the reality we're stuck in and be sucked into the world of Tamriel, you'd be able to get right down to the bare bones, pun intended, and start practicing necromancy right away. Now I'm gonna go take a shower because I feel disgusting after what I've talked about today. If you enjoyed this video at all, please consider liking and subscribing because you can always change your mind later. I'm Time Bomb, and I wish you safe travels on your next journey. I hope to see you again very soon.